it's gg baby what's good with y'all man we are back in the building and ready for another saints rebuild now before we even get into the video man leave a like down below please share it out with your favorite cousin auntie all that stuff man your grandma it don't matter help the series really glow up man i really appreciate it it really helps me out a lot if you guys could just even at the very least leave a like leave a comment uh and try to share this thing out so uh we're coming into a brand new season trying to defend the championship that we finally won last year in year five um already went through the uh preseason so let's go ahead and look at some of those stats for you guys so you can kind of understand where some of my moves came from now we did have four quarterbacks play here roy michaels did not look too bad 19 for 23 three touchdowns actually i mean did better than josh garland uh but ian book in limited playing time didn't miss a pass threw a touchdown led his team down the field damon Irvin did a pretty good job so i like roy michaels I think we definitely put him in the practice squad role, let him upgrade a little bit. It's not going to be too bad. Running backs, nobody really kind of stood out that much. Alex Rowland did have a very nice job there. Five yards to carry, two touchdowns for him. Uh, receivers, once again, just, I mean, mainly the normal people. Damian Perryman actually stood out this time. But a shocking big move is about to come over there. Uh, as I'm thinking about trading Traquan Smith, as you know, we just got uh, Calvin Edwards in the draft. And he's going to be looking to be my outside guy. We got Cole Edwards, or did I say people's names right? Cole Stewart that we have coming into the slot role. So with that being said, there's really kind of no room for Trey Quan Smith. He's kind of eating up roster spot. I can let somebody else get in that spot. He is a little bit older. Uh, so I did want to see, shop him around, see what's interesting. And I know I did look at this a little bit. The Bills uh, were one of the, the only team to show any amount of interest in them. Uh, and I say any amount of interest as in like yellow interest. But I was looking around too to see where he would fit in and make a big impact. And that impact would be better made on the Rams. Let me get down to him real quick. If you go look at their receiver room, and a lot of teams, Trick One Smith was a three or four receiver, even on the teams that needed receivers. Uh, but here over here with the Rams, they got that boy Jameis Winston. Uh, if we go over to their receiver room, Trick One Smith would be easily their number two right behind Cooper Cup, who also is aging so we need to hurry up and find uh some young talent over there but i thought why not let's see if i can make a deal happen here with the rams uh maybe not ask for too much i say maybe i say traquan smith is worth a two maybe two and a seven or maybe like a two and a future seven okay about halfway what if i take off the seven and just do a two i think it went up just a little bit okay so i guess they're kind of valuing him at a three Give me a three this year and a seven next year. I feel like that's not too much to ask. Trey Quan Smith is actually still a high caliber. Ooh. All right. Hey, I'll give you my first two if you give me a five and a three. Wow. Really? Interesting. Okay. Where is their fifth round pick in relation to our fifth round pick? Then am I willing to swap them? 159 as opposed to they're at 147. So, I mean, we would still move up. So, I'll give them that. There we go. Traquan Smith going to the Rams for a third and fifth round pick this year while we're giving up a fifth and sixth round pick. I think it's a pretty good deal. Let me know down below what you guys think. If you guys would have uh, evaluated it a little bit differently. He's our receiver like what? Five now? Four? Yeah, five. Because we still do have Deontay Harris, who I would consider receiver four. And I was even debating on uh, trading Deontay Harris. So I was like, no, nah, I'll keep him. Uh, so let's go back to my roster uh, before we do handle the cuts. There was just one small change I wanted to do. Oh, never mind. I already did it <laughs> while I was doing stuff on my own time, which was moving Denzel Dalton from left outside linebacker to right with us having now two 23-year-olds uh, that are honestly about to like run stuff over there. Uh, I still have a 26-year-old over here, so it's not like I could just switch the other one to this side, which you know would probably make more sense just moving one of those to this side and leaving him to back up over there. But I'm going to leave Denzel Dalton there to be a backup, and we're going to get rid of Ch Chaz Surratt here during cut week spoiler uh but craig montgomery will be over over there starting we still got sean dobson we still got john brown and now we've got i mean we got a rookie that we're at 75 and i think he has hidden development he does and then we have jerry's route who we just drafted last year only normal dev has some playing time in 75 and 74 so obviously i'm probably gonna let jabari ogletree play he's got the hidden development we're gonna see what he can do and let jerry's route go back into the back of all and here we go, cut week, man. I'm going to try to go through this pretty quick because I already know, you know, all the moves is getting made. Roy Michaels, practice squad. Uh, go over to halfback. I think I, one, two, three, four. Junior Buchanan and Luke Freeman. Obviously, I think Roland played his way onto the depth chart this year. 
I didn't really see any kind of huge discrepancy between these two. So I'm going to let Moo Jr. Buchanan over to the practice squad. Fullback, we got one of them. Receiving room, we already know. One, four, two, three, <laughs> five, six, and uh, you know, bottom half of the rush. I'm sorry, y'all gotta get cut. Only 23 years old, but see, that's why I'm saying it's tough. Like 23, 68 overall. Do I let him go? Do I let Marcus Callaway go? And let some of these younger dudes finally get their get their way onto the roster. I think the first thing I want to do though, I mean you're 24, you're going to the practice squad. 24, practice squad. You got Ed Holmes. Damian Perriman, I feel like played the best. Obviously, he had the best stats. So I think I'm gonna cut Holmes. Mm. How many receivers do I have left now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I got eight people here. So two gotta go. See, this is where I say, like, do I let Deontay Harris go at 28 years old? We have people to kind of fill up that spot. Uh, let me see if Mike Lemon's actually impressed me at all. Yeah, man, I think it's I think it's time. Marcus Callaway, I mean, we haven't really seen him get on the field much. Let's let him go to a team where maybe he can make an impact and you know revitalize his career. I'm gonna go ahead and cut him. We'll have to eat the 1.1 million in dead money, but we'll free up 2.64 in cap space. So we'll let him go and uh I'll wait on receiver for now. Here we go out at left end. I think it'd just be better to go ahead and just cut Emmett Flynn here. Also gonna cut James Robinson, two years older than Brandon Lynch and two over points less. So it makes the most sense. Chaz Surratt, we already talked about. I'm gonna let him go eat 890K and uh, dead money, but free up 2.1 million. I'll take it. And that corner, one, two, three, four, five. So that means two people gotta go. Paul Thornton, I guess you will use your loosefulness. I'm gonna cut you and move Dominic Crosby to the practice squad. And with one position group left, man, uh, Damon Perry was the highest receiver in terms of stats for the preseason. So I think I got to go ahead and let my boy, he's only 22 years old too, one overall point less. I think he'll have time to develop. We're going to go ahead and cut Mike Lehman and let Damian Perryman make the active roster. So there it is. We finished that up. Uh, the only thing left to do is to kind of fill up my practice squad roster uh, because now that all those moves have been made, I only have one, two, three, four, five people on my practice squad. I'm uh, going to get a couple more because I think I can fill it out with like 10 or 11. So go sign like five more people to my practice squad so they're not automatically putting people there that I don't want. And we'll go ahead and get into the regular season. Back in here at the roster before we get to week one because there were some good players out there, man. Devin Reese was practice squad eligible at an 80 overall. So we went ahead and dropped back or had to, yeah, drop back Luke Freeman into the practice squad. And Devin Reese will make the active roster as running back number three and low key competing with Lamar Crothers for running back number two. What is he's an 81 elusive back base? He's 80 elusive back. So right there on his heels. And now we've got really three good running backs. And if Alvin Kamara decided to get injured or hurt, I've got two people to kind of really choose from and feel comfortable with. As well over here, Roman Macklin, also practice squad eligible, 23 years old, 79 overall right now, 78 speed rusher. And that's better than Alonzo Smith's been able to come up with. So Alonzo, I'm going to have to release you because you have no more practice squad eligibility. Free up 680K. And that way he's backing up Marcus Davenport. And now we got somebody young back there that, uh, once again, I trust. And there's one more move at the safety position. Devin Waiters, you've come in and made some hard hits, my boy. I'll, I'll give you that much. Uh, this dude's coming in with 83 zone, way better coverage, a little bit faster one year younger and three overall points better and you have no more um what's it called practice squad time so you gotta get released i'm sorry eating 240k in debt money but freeing up 777k and here we are coming into a new season against green bay so unfamiliar opponent i say we go ahead and just hop straight into week one uh, my goals for the year obviously we're going to try to make the playoffs i feel like the roster's only gotten stronger after the draft and we have three people come back from injury d'angelo Steele got hurt in preseason but he is now back at starting tight end spot number one trey stewart is also back as well get back into his backup role though behind now new left guard cam maddox and last year's rookie standout cedric blackburn is back at defensive tackle number two i don't think he was one of my rush defensive tackles i think we still have reggie holt doing that very more um yeah so yeah we still have reggie holt doing that role coming up from right there but he will still come in and make an impact obviously we run a little bit more of our base uh let's go ahead and look at our keys to victory uh, i think one of the things that we can kind of focus on is 
a little bit more dominating offense. You know, I think we've really kind of upgraded the offense in the, as a whole uh, to be a little bit better. I mean, obviously we got Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, Josh Garland is starting to play a little bit better, a little bit more consistent. Um, still going to worry about the run game. We got that new rookie, Calvin Edwards, who's looking like he might be a beast. And then Cole Edwards will hopefully be into a bigger role this year. Deontay Harris taking a step back and Trey Quan Smith longer being here. We still got our safety blanket in D'Angelo Steele. So 150 yards of offense here today or passing it today. So let's go ahead and get to our weekly strategy. All right, let's actually go ahead and look at this roster. I mean, we're six years in. I don't think we've seen a game against Green Bay once. Let's see what they're doing right now. Sam Darnold looks to be their starting quarterback over there. Jason Waters, two-year man, and then they drafted one last year too as well. Just drafting backups behind Sam Darnold at this point. Still got Aaron Jones out of the backfield. Kadarius Tooney, Devin DuVernay, Michael Pittman Jr. Okay. Our DB's going to have their work cut out for them today. I like not And then two speed demons on the outside. Okay, so we should look for a lot of passes probably down the field. Matthew Jones, a pretty star tight end there. Offensive line, about average, above average slightly. Defensive line, obviously still got 99 overall Kenny Clark, but uh, linebackers looking kind of sus. Ooh, and they, ooh, other than Jair Alexander, our pass game should eat. So I feel like we should eat on offense. Defense is going to be... A little shaky. We we'll have to see how our DBs play against that much speed. Uh, but maybe defending the deep pass this game should be our best option. Now it's saying they don't even pass. Obviously, you still have Aaron Jones. So, I, yeah, maybe we do stop Aaron Jones. Well, this is a pass 66% of the time. But they want me to. I got to think about this smartly now. So, obviously, Aaron Jones is a threat. If we stop him and force him to throw it deep and just trust our DBs. Or we focus on taking away the they wouldn't come out throwing deep i don't think it means so yeah we'll take away the run and just trust our dbs to go ahead and lock up down the field full pads start of the season so starters all reps hope y'all don't get tired and then on offense uh I, you know i just praised our offense wanted to you know show love to everybody so i think i really want to start with uh running inside letting alvin kamar kind of lead the way and let's go into the passing after that Here we are, baby, back into the game for the first time this season against Green Bay at home. And uh, some notable changes that you will see throughout this game as we almost get a sack on the first play. Come on now. If y'all cover just a little bit longer, we're going to get there. Uh, but Marcus Williams, hip pointer, he will be out for the game. So you will see Jamar Johnson come in. And Jamar Johnson is also our sub linebacker. So while he's down there at sub linebacker, you will see the other uh, new addition to the team, Devontae Batten. The guy that we signed out of free agency to come and back up our strong safety will be back there at free safety in our nickel packages. So also, I had to bring up my kicker that I had at practice squad. It wouldn't let me start the game because my kicker is still out for two weeks and I didn't have one technically on roster. Uh, dang, he goes up the middle. And that's a huge run. Aaron Jones, I told y'all to guard against the run. What are y'all doing? I said stop the run. And they just gave up a wide open lane to Aaron Jones right up the middle. Now, I know we said stop the outside run, but dang, y'all couldn't. Hopefully that isn't an influence of what's to come. You know, we've normally had really good run defense, so I don't want to see more of that. Let's see the offense, see if they can cheer me up today, though. Josh Garland, first pass at tempo of the season will go out of bounds. As it looks like all the receivers were locked up and pressure was getting there. But we love to see Josh Garland show a little bit of his or little bit of smartness football iq and just throw the ball away instead of taking a sack quick throw out he's got his receiver michael thomas on the slant route great job getting up and over the field getting taken down by two packers defenders to get us up to the 38 yard line barrage of passes to start the day and that is just off the market my boy's arm is a little bit noodle-ish to start out the season i hope preseason didn't you know wear you out them Short quarters you were playing. Throw out Abdul Wilcox with the catch and getting us close to the first down marker. And despite me saying to focus on the run, we've actually passed a little bit more here today. Alvin Kamar gets to the outside. Great blocking there from Cam Maddox. As Alvin Kamar is able to stiff arm his way forward for a first down 
and to get us to our side of the field. Drop back, handoff, Alva Kamara. Cluttered up, hole up the middle, making something out of nothing, though. Stumbling his way forward up for about a gain of six. Clean pocket out to the outside flag route, and that is going to be a catch for D'Angelo Steele there. Going to leave the corner wide open. That is too much of a big body and too much speed at tight end. Oh, quick throw out this time, and that is a great catch. Cole Stewart's first catch of the season. So I haven't seen anything yet from Calvin Edwards, but I think he is out there by himself right now. Look how big he looked. Throw the thing up to him. Oh, we are throwing it up to him. And catches it, breaks a tackle. First catch of the season. He got the dark visor on. It just looks so swole over there as he shrugs off Jair Alexander. I wonder if that's going to be the matchup all day instead of going with Michael Thomas. And that is Cole, uh, yeah, Cole Stewart's first touchdown catch of the season. I'm about to be mixing up his name and Calvin Edwards' name all season. I can already tell. Now, come on, defense. Y'all had one big blunder. And let's see if how they recover here. What's the play con to make sure that doesn't happen again? Right there. Cluttered up the middle. Sean Dobson meeting him on contact with a little help from Marcus Dob uh, Davenport to take down Aaron Jones for only a gain of four. Formation switch up here. Drop back. Almost getting there for a second. That is a good knockdown. Marshawn Lattimore still showing that he is all locked down, all shut down. Drop back. Sam Darnold throwing out. And Aaron Jones didn't even turn around. Was lucky enough to get a hand on it. And that it wasn't picked off. But it looks like a three and out. And New Orleans will take the ball back. Garland's ready again. Throwing out. Ah, This time could not find Michael Thomas on the quick slant. He was open, at least, you know, by Michael Thomas standards. Uh, just couldn't hold on to it there. Are we going to see a jet sweep out to Alvin Kamara? Something we have not seen out of empty in, what, five seasons now? I don't think we've ever seen a jet sweep. And maybe that's why, because it really didn't work. Third and nine for New Orleans. Josh Garland dropping back, throws out. And I think that is Calvin Edwards with the catch. And this time, they brought forward two Packers defenders. Because we saw what happened to Jair last time. He only did one. Back-to-back -back three announcements. We see both defenses lock up. You got to wonder if that's going to be more of what we see today. Is it going to be defensive or the offense is going to get back hot again? Drop back. Blitz is coming in. He's going to get there just in time. A little shaky, wobbly pass out to the outside. And that's what you want to see New Orleans do more of, man. I want to see Sean Dobson coming up and a couple of blitzes. Let's send a nickel blitz every now and then. And I'm really going to be watching this coverage. See how that young buck play out there. Safety throw over the middle, and there is nobody here in sight. Aaron Jones is just an easy first down. Base look here for New Orleans. Three linebackers in. Drop back. Looks like short routes only, and the slant route gets wide open. Might have been a little pick play there to the outside. Linebacker getting in the way. Darnay Holmes could not keep up with the receiver for whatever reason. Now that could also be the Kadarius Tony effect. We know all their out or both their outside receivers got a ton of speed between him and Duvernay. Throw out, quick to the tight end, and we are there to lock it up. No first down. Handoff. Aaron Jones gets enough for the first and puts them into red zone territory with 19 yards away from Pater. And we'll come into the second quarter. Score tied 7-7. Ball on the 19, though, for Green Bay. And what will they do coming out of the quick timeout? Session throw out to the tight end quickly, and he breaks one tackle. Ogletree looking kind of weak over there. I know he's a rookie and all, but... You were supposed to be in the weight room, bro. Where was you at a rookie minicamp? You better not have skipped out. Throw out Sam Darnold. Finding his receiver late. Paul Adebo. Probably see a heavy dose of Aaron Jones. Oh, nope. Motion in. Making sure everybody stays tight. The tight end is wide open in the flats. And they get there and wrap him up. Great recovery from CJ Gardner-Johnson. New Orleans looking to lock the door in here. It's going to be a play action here. Coming off the edge. And he gets him down for the sack. Ogletree might not be able to tackle tight ends, but he can tackle QBs. Look at him, just right off the edge. Aaron Jones had nothing, no time to react to even get to him. And has a good sack on Sam Darnold to knock them back a couple yards. Bend, but don't break. Just don't give up 10. Drop back. Sam Darnold looking. Pressure was collapsing. He just has to dump off to his running back, Sam, or Sean Dobson there. 
to knock them down and they'll have to settle for their three, but we'll still take the lead. Let's get into one more offensive drive here. See if we can go ahead and match this. Josh Garland will play fake here to Alvin Kamara. Pressure was coming in. He finds his receiver. D'Angelo still. Not much running attempts here for Alvin Kamara here early. Play fake once again. Finding a wide open. Cole Stewart there for the catch as he's able to get down for a great first down play there. Y'all ever have them brain farts? <laughs> I swear, I'm going to get their names mixed up all the time. So between Cole and Calvin. Uh, we'll, we'll get it right before the end of the season. Throw goes out, out of a sack, and he finds his receiver wide open. That time, Michael Thomas. We ain't gonna disrupt that man's name. Let's see this drive continue to move downfield. Motion here for D'Angelo Steele. Play fake, and we'll give it up to Evan Kamara. Breaks one tackle and gets taken down. Jai Alexander and the Green Bay defense was all over that and ready for it. They knew D'Angelo Steele was not gonna be running the ball there. Shotgun throw out. D'Angelo still 101. And, oh, he knocks it out late. And from 50, what is this? A 53 yarder. No Will Lutz no more. Harrison Buckner is hurt. So Shane Pitts is going to have to come in to kick. Oh, no. We're going to go for it. Yeah, I know I did say I signed up to kick it for practice squad, but he did not have the stats for me to want him to kick field goals like this as Alvin Kamara gets enough for the first down. Smart decision. We don't have our starting kicker in. We have our punter kicking kicks, and I don't even know if he has the leg room to do that. As Alvin Kamara catches the quick pass out, one of our favorite uh, plays to call when we need some big yardage. Play fake. Blitz is coming. You got to get rid of that. Blitz came in quick. Is that looks like maybe a nickel blitz by the number there. Nickel or safety blitz. Oh, no. He's actually, maybe he's their sub linebacker. A night, wearing 19 at linebacker. That's, that's pretty interesting, but... Was able to get back there fast. So he obviously has some speed as we get off to Alvin Kamar here just to get a couple yards back. And now this is a much more makeable field goal, even if we did let in uh, the practice squad kicker. So Shane Pitts lining up for it. And will he tie this game up right before the uh, halftime? It is good. I thought he was short for a second, but that kick looked kind of weak. And here we are up into the booth. So let's hope everything holds here and we are able to kind of get a lead going back into the second half. Five yard penalty against the offense to move them back a little bit and you see a fourth and eight and we will get the ball back uh, just before the two minute warning. So two minute offense coming into play here is, okay. oh, big play going down the field, 30 yard reception to Cole Stewart. Let's see if we can get a score in before, the, uh, before halftime. Coming down to 60 seconds left in the first half. Throw goes out and that is Cole Stewart. With the catch, and we do call our first timeout. Getting onto our side of the field, though, I like that. Don't call hurry up and then waste the timeout. If you're going to call it, just call it. Second and three. Four-man rush pocket looking clean. Finds a receiver over the middle. It's a fumble. And Green Bay picks it up. I don't know if that's a fumble. That was way too quick. If anything, that should have been an incomplete pass. The rookie, Calvin, making a mistake here. Let's see. Throw out. I, oh, no, he's down. I'd say, if anything, that's down. Booth review. This time, I'm not messing it up. They better give me my booth review. Yeah, knee, elbow, arm, hand. All that was down first. Yeah, that should be coming back for sure. I mean, great play there. Uh, by Jones, the defensive back. But that should be coming back to us. It's all right, rookie. You all right. So we did call timeout, and I think now I am kind of stuck in here watching. We'll see. 56 seconds left and only one timeout left. Throw goes out to the corner. Michael Thomas! <laughs> TD for New Orleans as Michael Thomas gets wide open on the corner route. You know he's that corner post specialist. You cannot leave that man one-on-one -on -one coverage. That was way too easy. Give me my lead back. All right, up here in the booth, they were able to get three in just before the half. So now it's only a four point game uh, coming out of the second half. But let's see if this offense can keep rolling. Uh, maybe we'll see a little bit more rushes here from Alpha Kamara as we've seen about a, hand, a good handful on this drive. Ooh, Josh Garland actually getting into the running mix and we're inside the red zone. Let's cap it off with a touchdown here. Ah, we get stalled out and it's only a field goal to take back one score lead. But CJ Gardner Johnson with the pick. And we answer right back with the one score touchdown from Alva Kamara. There 
they're driving now as well they're in their own red zone territory will they cap it off with just three so it'll be still a two possession lead as we're coming in close to the fourth quarter starting the fourth quarter out with the ball will be green bay looking to shrink this lead just a little bit as a couple big pass plays come in penalty that hurts third and seven is 11 yard pass to tony sam darnold getting them closer to the red zone on third and five and they'll have to settle for yet another three and it's only an eight score lead how will new orleans look to hold this off four is up can we get our first double the season here against green bay handoff up the middle alvin Kamara, big running lane they almost broke through i think that's kenny clark there doing what he does best breaking through the line with ease but able to go ahead and break off five there and we'll go back to empty oh here we go motion here this time it will be cole stewart on the jet sweep and he will get basically about the same result only a one yard gain off of that might need to take that play out the playbook <laughs> third and four throw over the middle and that is calvin once again he's trusting him trying to at least Jair and coverage that time and it gets knocked out of his hands so now green bay sam darnold you have six and a half minutes to try to go down get a touchdown a two-point conversion to tie the game up we'll see if they even go for two if they get down there though throw out to the flats and it's wide open with room to run and he's able to get out of bounds good way to stop the clock you know the clock is not your friend in this case Ooh, a little pistol here from green bay handoff aaron jones going up the middle getting up to the 34 yard line and he's had a pretty good day almost at 100 yards on the day here drop back nothing's open there five man pressure tight end wide open with daylight in front of him once again and it's going to take two and that boy darnay holmes need to get in the weight room sam darnold four man pressure throws it out that's a huge mistake paulson adebo undercuts the route gets a huge pick for new orleans going up the field and he finally gets taken down by the offensive lineman probably could have been six had he had a little bit better blocking but that might be the turnover that does it great undercut there on the route just playing underneath coverage sam darnold not enough arm strength and not enough accuracy on that pass as Josh Garland will come on the field and hopefully we see a lot more runs though to go ahead and clock this game out. Getting the start from midfield, thanks to the turnover. Handoff here, Alvin Kamara going to the outside, nothing open. Not an explosive run game, but I mean, we'll take 80 yards. Going back to the pass here, going to the other side this time, D'Angelo Steele catching and getting forward. We've seen Calvin Edwards, you know, struggle with holding on to the ball after catches when the when the db is close to him so i like the decision to go with your more sure-handed more secure safety blanket in a time of need under three minutes to go one more first down should do it if they don't come up off these timeouts soon handoff alvin kamara big running lane up the middle he'll stumble forward and get enough for the first as we will see cam maddox go down with an injury here late in the game so that'll bring in trey stewart our you know more secure backup Probably one of the most reliable backup offensive linemen we have, thankfully. Uh, but hopefully that's not a big-time injury. Ah, Jari Alexander all over that. Nowhere to really go. He's in his X-Factor mode, but we shouldn't be passing. And that should take us to the two-minute warning. Works like an extra timeout in their favor, so they won't have... They'll at least have one on offense if they can stop us. But we're in field goal range, too. Oh, he misses the tackle. To Kenny Clark shot up into the backfield. Thought he was an all-pro for a second. And then realized that Alvin Kamara was already five yards past them. As we're just that close to a first down now. Only one more yard to go and this game is over. Kenny Clark in the backfield again. Not making the same mistake twice. That boy has been eating up our right guard in our center. It's going to take some deep shots down the field. Only one timeout. They need to score and get the onside kick down. What's that? 11? Throw goes out to the tight end. They need some more shots down the field. All day to throw, and he throws another yig. That is Sean Dobson this time. Green daylight in front of him, and will get tackled by, I think that's the same offensive lineman that made the tackle last time. That boy needs a contract on defense. Uh, but, yeah, that'll just about do it, man. This game is all but over.
right. And that was a great game, honestly, from start to finish, 30 to 19. It was looking a little shaky there first. The big play that we gave up to start the game there to Aaron Jones. Uh, but three interceptions there late, uh, two of them coming late, uh, really helped us kind of seal this game up. So Alvin Kamara, 112 and a touchdown. Ended up doing better than Aaron Jones in terms of total yardage, not better in terms of <laughs> average per carry. But he did have that big run. What was that? 50 yards. So, I mean, if you take that away, he's only 12 for 44. So a lot of those yards and a lot of his good game came from that. Cole Stewart, six for 75 and a touchdown. Michael Thomas, six for 79 and a touchdown. What did the rookie do? Three for 32, not too bad. Had a drop in there. Uh, almost had that really crucial fumble that would have been very bad had it had stood. But I think he had a pretty good first game. Ogletree, I liked what I saw to him as well. Uh, really saw the rookie shine and do what makes me the most proud. Make plays when I need you to make plays. And we'll see them develop as the season goes on. After the game, we got some upgrades here. Getting one for Josh Garland, which is great. It's been a while since we got one for him. His accuracies are eh, 91, 88, 90. Uh, throw power is at 94. So I think I want to go with a field general upgrade uh, so we can get his accuracies up, man. So we'll see a lot less uh, incomplete pass. One deep, one short when we really want the medium, of course. Uh, but as well, Shane Pitts, you had to come in and do a lot today, my G. Extra points, uh, field goals um kickoff kicks so 93 power which was enough for today 85 accuracy so we'll upgrade his accuracy and get him up to a plus one plus one we weren't able to have success that we planned for but getting the win doesn't or win is a good way to temper the disappointment uh i mean i wouldn't even say disappointment i mean you had over 100 yards you didn't get to 150 uh, but you had 112 you know i'll still take that a thousand points for everybody and plus five extra staff points and uh as far as how deep we're gonna get into this um I see we do have Tampa Bay. Let's go look at the schedule real quick. I see we got two division games coming up after Baltimore and then Minnesota. So let's at least get through these next three weeks. I do want to kind of go through this a little bit faster pace. We've won our Super Bowl. Now it's about getting back and can we protect it? Ah, so this sucks, man. We did lose here 31 38, gave up 14 in that fourth quarter. So a very winnable game. Gave up too much rushing yards, 273. And I told y'all to watch the run and y'all still gave up that uh that rushing game to him so let's go see josh Gordon 355 and three touchdowns can't be mad at him he's he's balling this year jk dobson actually went off we still gave up 78 to lamar the challenge was to give up under 75 but two touchdowns each for both of them four broken tackles for lamar all right y'all gotta fix this bro i know he's a runner y'all gotta fix this man four broken tackles for the qb though Abu Kamar didn't have a good game, and I was trying to uh, depend on him. Nine for 120 and two touchdowns for Cole Stewart. So we were missing some key people. Uh, Calvin Edwards was out with the injury. So let's see how much did Deontay Harris do. Two for 12. Uh, not too bad. Two for 25 for Tevin Hadley got into the game a little bit. Had to get them in. But you see Cole Stewart actually was leading our offense today. 88 yards there for Michael Thomas. Uh, but we also did have injuries to our right outside linebacker. Uh, Chad, Craig Montgomery and one of our starting offensive linemen, uh, Deion Gordon, was out. So we had to move Cam Maddox over there, put Trey Stewart into the left guard role. So that was, could have had something to do with the run game being a little bit lax. I don't know, uh, but hopefully we can bounce back. We got four four straight road games. We already played one of them, but so three more straight road games to get into and two of them against the division. And there it is, man. A good bounce back victory here. 35, 21, 14 in that last quarter. And I see 300 yards passing. And that makes that me think that boy Josh Garland is an animal this year. 352, five touchdowns. Scott sacked twice. We were able to get to Daniel Jones three times. But that boy has turned into an animal. As we've seen Alvin Kamara, even though I'm putting run inside as my focus, it doesn't seem to be like he's thriving. I mean, four yards of carry is still pretty good, but he's not getting that many attempts. You see Devin Reese is coming in seven for 23. Crowder is coming in seven for 16. So I don't know if he's just tired or what, or if we're trying to save him for the postseason. I'm cool with either way. A buck 15 there for Michael Thomas. Two touchdowns there for Cole Stewart. One for him, one for Wilcox, one for Alvin Kamara. Uh, still no Calvin Edwards as he is still hurt off of, I think it was a dislocated shoulder. So we might be getting him back this week or next week. Uh, I'm not sure. But other than that, we had no injuries going to this. So this is what a fully healthy team uh, can do. As we see here, two sacks for Montgomery, one for Davenport. Um, and Paulson Adebo had the interception for us. Time to check in with QB1, who's had a great first three games to start the season. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead with build chemistry, though. I don't need you to. We don't need you to carry the team. It would be great if you do. Uh, but I don't want to put that kind of pressure on him. He's been doing just fine with the pressure that we've given him. Yep, Calvin Edwards is back this week. Uh, so now we will see the team at full, full strength. 
Let me move him back up the depth chart to our number. Where did I have him? Did I have him at my number two or my number three? I think, yeah, I think I had him at my number two because I want him on the outside if we go two by two. If we go slot, obviously they'll bring in Cole Stewart. So uh, let's see what he does now. Now that he's back in, does that take away from Cole Stewart's production? I hope not. If it does, those two might have to flip because Cole Stewart actually has been balling this year. Uh, increase here for Tevin Hadley, our backup slot receiver. Kind of in a similar position as Cole Stewart. A lot of speed coming from him. 95 speed, 91 acceleration. The route running is going to get there as we keep upgrading his slot attribute. Now against Tampa, we've got Jordan Love still there, QB. The run game has been looking like it's their weak point. So we're going to go ahead and just defend the inside run. Or actually, no, what am I saying? Defend the short pass, make them run right into us. And hopefully we can get a dub there. Go back over to offense. It looks like their pass game is actually weak, which I love because we've been throwing the ball over the field, doing great. So throw it medium focus today. Keep everything the same here. We've got Calvin Edwards back and change up my weekly goals. I always change up my weekly goals. I don't ever leave them there. The same, I do something that's pretty realistic. You know, goals that we actually want to achieve. Don't rush the ball. Get two touchdowns, pass for 275. And let's go ahead and try. Uh, yeah, let's do this one. I want to try to score 30 points today. Let's get the offense run up. We've been doing it. So let's do it again. Let's make sure we have no uh, injuries, though, please. I want a fully healthy team for the first time since week one. Let's do it. ACL sprain for, <laughs> for Cedric Blackburn. Great. Yeah, that's, a, that's exactly what I meant to say. Not a fully healthy team. I want a somewhat partially healthy team. Uh, let's hope the offense is okay, though. It looks like clean bill of health for the offense. So let's just go make some changes to the defensive line really quick and see what happens against Tampa. Here's another disappointing loss. Gave up 42 to Tampa. So obviously there's something wrong with the defense this year. We've given up a lot of points, even in our victories. 320 yards and six touchdowns. That's in the secondary. That's not even because of the defensive line injury we had today. I mean, maybe a little bit less pressure, but see Josh Garland still going off today. We got to figure out what's going on with the defense and why we're giving up so many passing yards. So got to reevaluate. Maybe look at the linebacker room, look at the DB room and see what's going on. Cole Stewart, even despite Calvin Edwards coming in and dominating, 6 for 91 in a touchdown, still went off 7 for 135 in a touchdown. Thomas, 64 in a touchdown. You know he's a number one, so he's probably getting the most of the guarding. Uh, during the game so still able to put up a couple numbers and I think our receiver room and our receiver stats and our passing stats in general are going to look nice at the end of the year uh, but we got to fix this man like 19 points in the first game that we watched but other than that 31 21 42 or 38 21 42 so uh, yeah we got a lot to go ahead and watch this next episode we got Minnesota coming up next they're three and one so this should be a good game to watch we'll see if we can bounce back against them we got Tampa Bay again in a couple weeks Hopefully we can go ahead and do something there. They're three and one. Maybe we even start out with a couple simulations and get into Tampa Bay. Uh, but so far through the season, man, you see we are down the low. Number two best scoring offense. Number one in passing yards. Rush game looks terrible. And defense stats all in general are trash. Uh, so might just come in here to look at the depth chart and see what I can move around and work around to make sure that our defense is being just a little bit better. I mean, the only thing I could honestly think of that could be a switch would be here at left outside linebacker, only because I did see this while doing upgrades. Jabari Ogletree has no coverage ability. So that might need to be Jerry's route over there until we can get Jabari Ogletree up enough uh, in his coverage skills. Now, Sean Dobson obviously is going to still do what he does. Craig Montgomery, what is your coverage skills? His is low as well. That might just be it. It might just be the linebacker in the room that's causing that because i mean our dbs are the same dbs that we've had for the longest uh, i love the cover skills here 93 90 94 80 85 79 we'll take that and then at safety marcus williams cj gardner johnson and jameer johnson comes in a nickel with his 77 man 81 zone so i don't know need to figure out something to fi figure it out though as we continue to move through the season uh, two and two, not the start that we're looking for, but we'll get deeper and farther into the season on the next episode, man. Let me know what you guys are thinking of the series down below. If you guys are enjoying it, make sure you guys are heading over to Smooth Got Game to, you know, catch up on everything. I know this is still dropping on Sean Too Smooth right now. We're almost caught up, uh, looking probably about mid-June for that. So be on the lookout. Do have new series dropping, Sly Cooper, uh, my MLB series. I have a road to the show and a rebuild over there as well. So check over there. Please leave a like, subscribe over there if you clicked into this video. Love you guys so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one, man. It's been your boy, Shot Too Smooth, a.k.a. Black Okage, Black Avatar, King Leo. Get you guys in the next video. All right, I'm gone. Peace.